Hey, what's up everyone? So in this video today, I'm going to show you how to turn a Figma design into a really cool 3D web page like this using the new Dora plugin. So let's get into it. Alright, so here we are in my Figma design. So as you can see, I have a very simple landing page here. And before we move everything to the Dora platform, uh, we need to clean up the design to make sure that these layers are essential and there's no uh, hidden layers or things that you don't need. Uh, so things like these lines. So I would prefer to create this line in Dora platform. So I'm going to remove this. And once you're done, we can go to the plugin tab. Uh, so you can see that I already have the plugin here, but if this is your first time, you can uh, click on the find more plugin and search for Figma to Dora's and you can see that it's showing up here so with the artboard selected I'm going to click run and then it started to copy all of the layer in this artboard and all you have to do next is go to the Dora platform and paste everything to it so here I am in a Dora platform so I'm going to create a new project and let's name it WAPS for those of you who are not familiar with Dora, it's a platform that can give you the power to build a website with no coding. Alright, so here we are in a new Dora project. Uh, so first thing, let me double check the canvas. So desktop is good. And the next thing I want to make sure that we have the same artboard height. So let's copy this and go back to Dora and then uh, move it a little bit. And here you can paste or put in the exact height at the Figma artboard. So now we have a long canvas like this. Uh, so previously we have copied all the layer from Figma and now all you have to do is just to paste everything to this canvas. So let's hit command or control V. And now you can see that the uploading progress is going on down here. So just give it a couple of seconds and then bam, all of your design from Figma has been transferred to the Dora platform. And I can tell that it remained the exact position of the Figma layout and also remain all of these layers separated and editable like these text. Alright, so next step, I'm going to go through each of these layers to make sure that they are set up properly for responsiveness. Okay, so let's select these headers and let's ungroup it. And I'm going to select all of these elements and move it back to the original position. And for these elements on the right, I need it to be constrained to the right viewport. So let's select this hamburger menu and then connect it to the right edge of the viewport and connect the top dot to the top of the viewport. And same for the profile icon, so let's connect to the viewport top and connect this part to the hamburger menu. And do the same for the elements on the left, but uh, we're going to connect it to the viewport left. And same here, connect it to the viewport top. And for the big text here, so by default, it's already constrained to the viewport top and the two sides. But I don't want this to stay at the viewport top, so I'm going to click here and then just release it to remove the constraint. So the next thing I want to do is to create the free vertical line that run across the whole page. So let's click here to create a container at any size. So you can go here to set the width at one pixel. And for the height, I'm going to switch it to uh, viewport height and set this as 100. So that means it's going to be 100% of the viewport height. And now let's select the light and then align it to the top like this. And then let's connect it to the viewport top. And next I'm going to duplicate it into two more lights. And I'm going to select the middle light and then constrain it to the two sides of the viewport. So now this light will always be at the center of the page. And then let's select this light and connect this to this and this to the viewport right. And now it's being distributed here and do the same for the other light so here is connected to the middle light and this one connected to the viewport left so now all of the three light is being distributed evenly so let's publish this to see how it works uh, so here is the preview so you can scale the browser to see if it's working or not so as you can see that it's working perfectly 
Uh, so you may notice this, there's a gap here in the background so no problem just go back and then click on the canvas and go to the width setting and switch it to field space so let's go back to the preview and then refresh and boom the gap is disappear and now it's working really nice all right so and the next thing i want to do is to tie this text to uh, the like uh, next to it so let's just move it to the right position and then let's select the first text and then just link it to this light right here and also for this one i'm going to link it to the upper text so now uh, let's refresh and now it's being aligned and when you scale the browser it will always align to the light so it's looking pretty cool and then I'm going to move all of these lines down to uh, the bottom of the list to make sure that it's not overlapping any of the uh, front element. And now let's apply the same process for the rest of the page to make sure everything is aligned properly. All right, so after all of that, we have a really tight layout and fully responsive and next step i wanted to add a layer underneath the navigation bar because sometimes it's overlapping so let's go back here and create a container and let's set the width to 100 percent viewport width and move it to the right position and change the color to match the background colors and make it much shorter and let's move it down to the list uh, to make sure that it is underneath the other element and then let's click on this icon here to open the timeline panel so if you move this pointer around you can see that the uh, viewport is moving up and down to indicate the scrolling animation uh, so I need the panel to always stay at the top of the viewport so let's connect it to the viewport top uh, so now you can see that it's staying sticky to the viewport top and another thing i want to do is to create some fading in animation for these big numbers uh, so really simple all you have to do is just to drag the timeline pointer to the position where the numbers shows up in the viewport and then create a keyframe here and then move it back a little bit and set the opacity to zero and then it will automatically create keyframe and also create this animation so let's refresh to see how it work here so you can see that there's a fading effect here to make it feel more natural and then you can apply it to the rest of the page all right so let's move into the next step so i'm going to import a 3d model to the page uh, so here i am at sketchfab.com this is a marketplace for you to find a lot of 3d models that is compatible with dora uh, so i purchased this really cool animated wafts models uh, so let's click here to download it uh, so we have a lot of options here so glb format uh, we works best with dora so let's download the um, 1k versions uh, because it's much lighter uh, so now let's get back to Dora and then I'm going to click here to create a 3d widgets and then set up the constraint to make sure that it's filled up the whole screen all right so now let's click on this button here to import the GLB that we just downloaded and give it a few seconds and then boom we have this 3d models right here so uh, you can use the mouse scroller to uh, zoom in or out and using the right mouse to uh, pan the camera and you can select the 3d models and turn on this toggle to enable the animation so this is what it looked like in the previews and now i wanted to add some keyframe to the uh, 3d wops uh, so it can you know flying around instead of just staying in the same position uh, so let's select the camera and go to the timeline uh, panel down here and create a keyframe at the frame zero and then move it to the point where you want it to adjust the camera angle uh, so maybe this point and let's select the camera 
and click the left mouse to uh, drag the camera to this position so you can see that it automatically create keyframes so now when you move the timeline you can see that uh, the web is moving from the right to the left as we scroll and now you can even click here to add some easing to it all right so now all we need to do is to apply the same thing for the rest of the scrolling Alright, so from the process of doing that, I just realized that I have accidentally removed this blurry background. Uh, so no problem, let's just uh, go back to uh, Figma and using the plugin to uh, copy this uh, image to uh, the Dora platform. Now let's put it in the frame and then run the plugin. And just go back to Dora and hit Command V or Control V for PC. And now you can see that the image is being pasted uh, up here. So let's just move it back to the uh, uh, section down here. All right, so now uh, we have something like this. So it still feel a little bit um, like static. Uh, so I wanted to rotate the waps a little bit as we scroll. Uh, so let's select the 3D scene on the left panel and then create a keyframe at the frame zero. And then move the pointer to the exact keyframe of the camera at this point. And then let's change the rotation value to 60 degree. And then add the same easing to this animation. And apply the same process for the rest of the animation. Alright, so this is how the final result look like. So I know this is a very simple uh, web page, but uh, because we don't have a lot of time. But I think this is enough to demonstrate how handy this Figma Chidora plugin can be. Uh, so I think it's really gonna help boost the whole process of bringing design into Dora and make everything faster and more uh, flexible. Uh, so for those of you who want to learn more about Dora, you can just go to the description and then uh, follow the official Dora YouTube channels where you can find a lot of in-depth tutorials to create awesome websites with no coding. So this is the end of my tutorial today, so I hope you find this helpful and I will see you in the next one. Alright.